Welcome to Living Supernaturally with yours truly here, David Martin, and we're going to be continuing in this series on walking and living in the glory. Today, part five, and we're going to be looking at uh, today pretty much where we left off in our last session in the vision that I shared with you that God gave me back in 1983. In, in my lifetime, God has given me so much revelation and understanding of my quest of understanding uh, how to walk in the supernatural, how to do what Jesus did, and even greater. And as much as I have been believing for it, uh, Jesus said in John 14, 12, that he who believes in me will do what I do, amen, and even greater. That's been my my quest for over 40 years, and, and since God gave them to me in 1979. And, and so my, my quest, okay, how did you do it, Lord? How did you do it? And as much as I feel like I've had a insight, revelation, and understanding over the last 40 plus years. It's like where we are right now is on the cutting edge of a new thing. We're coming into, we've come into, not coming into anymore, we're here, we're in it, the operation of, of God's agenda of manifesting his kingdom on planet earth. And, and uh, the devil and uh, the, the, the world, uh, the, the systems of the world in, in uh, the dark side of governments and, and those that have an agenda against us, you know, the world uh, dominion people, the globalization are all trying hard to uh, put their last day's uh, plan into place. You know, with the uh, mark of the beast and all those kind of things, and and you know what? Here's what here's what I'm hearing hearing God say: Don't look at that. Don't look at the circumstances. What we need to do is keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, because He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. He is going to give you everything you need in this day and this hour. And the devil's trying hard to get us distracted. He's also trying very hard to get people into a place of fear. And in and, and looking to, you know, things other than God and through the blood of Jesus to meet our needs. And as I started this series here, uh, well, it's, we missed one week here recently because of computer issues and, and the network not working. But when we started this series, I knew what God showed me is that he wanted us to learn how to walk in his presence, his, his glory, in, in a greater way. And what I sense so strong is that as we walk in the glory, there is going to be a supernatural provision and a supernatural protection. And this manifestation of glory is, is going to happen through our relationship with him. He is right now, I believe what God is saying so strong to the church is, is, is uh, draw nigh unto me. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, amen, and, and take my yoke upon you. And he, he's wanting us more than any other time, I believe, to, to develop our relationship and our dependence upon him. That, that we, you know, look to you know, the great shepherd and, and, and you know, that, that, you know, we abide, as it says in Psalm 91, we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And for, for so many, and in myself included, sometimes, you know, we get so busy with the things of the world and, and it's just life that sometimes the things of the Spirit, you know, uh, lose their significance and, and then we, we don't walk at, at the level of, of uh, intimacy with God that we should have. And I, I believe that there's a stirring right now in the kingdom of God and in, in, in an awakening to the hearts and, and the minds of his people to, to, uh, to wake up and, and to uh, just really develop our relationship in our dependence upon him. And through this series, one of the things that I've seen, and, and for me, this goes back 40 years, some of the very first things I taught 40 years ago, you know, we're talking about 1979 and 1980, the, the beginning of our ministry, what God showed me in, in my quest 
in how to do what Jesus did, because that's been my message. How, you know, how did Jesus do what Jesus did? Right from the beginning, one of the key things that God showed me was the miracle of the transfiguration. That was a real key miracle in learning uh, the basics of or the significance of how to do what Jesus did. And it, it's related to death to self. Again, these are not words that a lot of people like to hear, but it, it's just the reality of the gospel, that we are crucified with Christ. Amen? We've got to come to that place of acceptance of that truth. And, you know, so much of today's gospel is all about, you know, prosperity and, and health and vitality and all that's good. Nothing wrong with all that. But we have to be willing to give it all up. We have to be willing to lay our life down when he says to do that. And again, I'm not against abundance of prosperity. I, I, I believe in that message, but not at the expense of our relationship with him. And he's, he's right now more than any other time in, in what I'm sensing in my heart is he's wanting us to draw closer to him and have this dependence upon him. And again, most of us have had that to some extent, but I, I, I really believe in, in the season that we're in right now, there, there's a greater calling, for lack of a better word, of, of, of Father God to draw nigh unto him. Amen? Now, in our last time together, I shared with you one of the visions God gave me back in 1983 that was just so significant to uh, my understanding of, of the, the need to worship. And what he taught me in that, in that is that worship is not something we do by going to church. It's not, you know, about singing. It's not about, you know, you know worshiping God as we, we think, of, you know, in church we're worshiping, right? Or even in, in time of prayer, we're, you know, we're worshiping. What he showed me, though, those, those are elements of fruit of worship, per se. But the worship that he is really seeking after is a lifestyle. And I'm going to go through the vision that I shared with you again, real quickly. But in the vision, what he showed me is that on, on a Sunday morning, in, uh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the ministry team, I'm on the, I'm on the platform during worship, and then all of a sudden, the roof of the church disappeared. And as the roof disappeared, I mean, I didn't know it was a vision right away. I mean, I, I, I thought it was something natural happened, but very quickly I realized, no, I'm looking at blue sky. And then God showed me the, this gigantic sphere of light over the church, gigantic sphere of light. And I'll, I'll put these slides up on the, on the screen again real quickly here as I, as I share the story with you. But this gigantic sphere of light, God showed me, this was just symbolic of his throne room of grace. It was brilliant. It was brighter than the sun. It was just incredible, almost hard to look at. But from this throne room of grace were beams of light that were touching a handful of people in the church. And, and I said, God, what is this? And he said, I'm ministering to those that are ministering to me, those that are worshiping me in spirit and truth. And I noticed as I looked at this, I, God was showing me one person was getting a healing, another person was getting a marriage restoration, and another person was getting a financial breakthrough. I mean, each person was getting something a little bit different. And when I looked up to see what I was getting, there was nothing. I mean, I didn't have anything, any, any, any beam coming on me. And, and I said, God, how come? And, and he said to me, because you're not worshiping me in spirit and truth. And I, I was really offended at, at that because, I mean, I let this, and this is back in, the, that, this vision happened in 1983. We moved to Oklahoma in 1982. And in 1981, I had quit a six-figure job, which back then, 1981, was a, a fair amount of money in a corporate uh, um, car and uh, just traveling around the world doing exceptionally well and God said leave all that to, to prepare for ministry well did all that now here we are and we're in Oklahoma I'm in Bible school it's actually in, in the first year of, of uh, Rhema Bible Training Center uh, ministry Bible school and uh, this is like March so you know six months seven months of Bible school at that point and I'm involved in the church I helped to start this church 
where I'm the ministry. I'm, I'm actively involved in ministry. I'm, I'm doing a men's, a men's breakfast and a men's gathering. I've got a Bible study in my home. I'm, I'm leading an evangelistic team. We're going out witnessing. I mean, uh, and, and I'm going to Bible school and I'm working. <laughs> and so I, I was I was really, really busy with the ministry. And so as I saw these different people getting their needs met supernaturally, I'm thinking, you know, when I looked up to see what I was getting, something significant was going to be, be coming to me. And, and what the, one of the key things that God showed me is that these people that were receiving, they weren't asking for anything. They, they, they were just worshiping. They were, they were in the service. And, and, and they were just, you know, worshiping God. They weren't asking for a financial breakthrough. They weren't asking for a healing. They weren't asking for, you know, their marriage to be fixed or whatever, anything like that. God was just supernaturally providing, blessing these individuals. And, but I, I didn't have any. There was nothing coming to me. And I said, God, again, why? And he says, you're not worshiping me in spirit and truth. And again, I always wanted to die. And I mean, I, I just only wanted to crawl underneath the altar. I mean, because, uh, you know, when God corrects you, it's never with sickness, disease, a car wreck, or bad things. And he always corrects you with his word. And he, he took me to the word in Romans 12. And it says there again, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, present, literally yield your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto me, and then King James it says, which is your reasonable service of worship. Well, in, in, in the Greek, in, in the Greek word there for reasonable service of worship is logikos, and it literally translates into, in newer version like New American Standard, your spiritual service of worship. And what God said to me is, you're not worshiping me. You're very busy, but you're, you're not worshiping me. And what he began to show me is the worship that he was seeking was a lifestyle. And a, a worshiper is somebody that wakes up in the morning as a worshiper. And when a, a, a worshiper wakes up in the morning, one of the very first things they're going to think about is, like Benny Hinn always said in his book, uh, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. It's, it's going to be, you know, your first greeting, oh, good morning, God. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. You're 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 recognizing that your your father, your dad, and your brother and, and your helper are are there just eagerly awaiting for you to wake up in the morning and, and have another day of greatness in the kingdom of God in, in the spiritual realm. It, it, it's a mindset that you're 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 thinking about him. And, and this is because of relationship. You you know, he you know he's God, and 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 he has become your friend. And I love the scripture in, in Psalm twenty five where it says he shares his intimate secrets, mysteries, with his friends, and th those that have a fear of him. And and so many people have this mindset of a of a fear of God as a. Uh, as a bad thing, and God really does not want you to fear Him. He wants you to have a reverence, a respect, an honor of Him as Almighty God, Almighty God, our Creator, and in Jesus as our Redeemer who laid down His life, and and it's a respect that we have for for the Godhead, and and then for the work of the Holy Spirit, and. But when, when you're a worshiper, what God showed me is you have a need of God. You're, you know, praise God, you know, for our, our talents. You know, you know, for me, I had a marketing ability, a sales ability, and, and, a, and, and the keenness in, 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 uh, in the business world. And I made a lot of money. I was very successful at, at that. And, and then I brought that, those same kind of elements into the kingdom of God, which made me a very effective soul winner. And, and <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing because I, you know, I didn't understand some of the early t importance of uh, that one person waters another, or one plants, one waters, and, and then God gives the increase. And, you know, I thought I had to do it all and with my sales and marketing training. 
every person that I came across. I mean, I literally, you know, I told them about Jesus, and if they said they weren't interested, you know, what that meant to me is I've not heard enough yet to really accept them. So I'd come at them from another direction. And I mean, I would just keep hitting them until they finally said yes. And for a lot of people, they just said the prayer to get rid of me. Uh, and, but anyway, the, the, the point is we have talents, we have gifts, and, we have, and, and so forth. But God, you know, as much as you know, he's graced us with them, he, he wants us to have our, our dependence on him. And, that, and because of that, we we have this this need to uh, pray because we know that in in taking time to pray and have a conversation with him that he is going to give us some level of you know insight some level of understanding we're we're going to have a, this communion time where you know it's like you know uh, with a spouse. I love being with my spouse. I love hearing about her day, uh, and I love, you know, you know what, how, what's going on in your world, and you know. So we 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 come, we converse, we spend time together, we talk, and that's what God wants with us. He wants us to have this intimate time of of uh, of sharing and, and 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 learning and and just being with Him. And what happens is, and, and again, if you remember now, I'm going to share the vision with you again, another aspect of it. But what God showed me in this vision is how, well, what happened is this gigantic sphere of light that was overhead was replaced first with a, a battery. And the battery is a plus and a minus, a, a positive side and a negative side. And essentially what you have is all the power on one side wants to get into the other side. And what God showed me is he is the positive side of the battery. We are the negative side. He is the all-sufficient one. We are, are, are needing. But what happens is when we have a mindset, well, what happened in the vision is he showed me that the people were being touched were the negative side of the battery. They, they had a, a need. They were empty. And literally what he was showing me is humility in how humility recognizes how much I need him. I need to feed on his word. Because, you know, Jesus said, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen? So a humble person is going to recognize the wisdom of God and the importance of feeding on the word. We're going to recognize the wisdom of God in, in the instruction of God and the importance of where it says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name is to be praised. See, so praise is something that happens naturally to, in, or in a believer's life when you recognize that he is worthy of that praise. And, and you're praising him and you're worshiping him because he's almighty God. So we, it, it's a, it's it, it becomes a lifestyle of your recognition of an almighty God. So you, you naturally, supernaturally as it would be, you walk in the spirit through the course of the day. And, you know, I, I always think of the deer, the, the scripture in Psalms, where as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You know, a worshiper is going to have this hunger and thirst for the things of God, like that deer. The deer there is actually a heart, and a heart is a deer that has an insatiable desire for water, even though it fills up at the water's brook, you know, you know, fill up and then go off, you know, frolicking, and, and but it doesn't get very far away before it realizes, ah, I need another drink. And it's like an alcoholic, you know, my, my father was an alcoholic and he died at an early age because he was an alcoholic. But growing up, I, I, I saw, that he was like that deer, only instead of needing natural water, he needed alcohol. But he'd have bottles hidden in, in the car and in, in the tire well, and, <laughs> and the toilet wasn't working, and I'd go to fix a toilet as a young boy and recognize there was a bottle of stash in the, in the back of the toilet. I mean, he had the stash everywhere because he, need, he needed this constant fix, and that's what God wants with us. 
we, we, we got to be like that deer, you know, we're panting for the waters brook. We, I got to have another drink. Another, I, I just need a, I, I just need some time in the spirit. I just need to continually fuel myself. Amen. And God so loves that. He so loves it when, when, when we worship him in the, in, in the abundance of heart of praising him and worshiping him and, and, and meditating on his word and hiding his word in our heart that we would not sin against them. See, these, this is the life of a worshiper. A, a worshiper just wants to be in the presence of God. A worshiper you know, wants to do whatever God says. He wants to be led by the Spirit. He wants to walk in the Spirit. And, and what God was showing me in all of this is, again, it's a mindset of humility and, and recognizing how much we need God, which is the opposite of pride. Now, what God showed me in this, though, again, the battery was one example, and we can't see the force of uh, electricity, but it's a powerful force. And it's going to go from positive to negative. And then he showed me, he replaced that whole picture with a picture of two stick magnets. And these two stick magnets, again, have polarity, positive and negative. And what happens is when you put the two stick magnets together of the same, same polarity, two pluses or two minuses, what's going to happen? Is they're going to push away, they're going to repel. But if you take the positive to a negative, they're going to not only uh, attract, but they're going to get stuck together. There's a powerful force, this magnetism, this powerful force that's going to hold them together. That you, know, you can literally shake them depending on the size of the magnet. And they're not going to come loose. And that's what God wants. Again, we can't see the force of, of, of the Holy Spirit, the force of, of an almighty God that's working. But what's happening is, is as we walk in that, that, that mindset, not as a negative attitude, but a, a negative in terms of humility, I need you, God. I need your word. I need your, in your spirit. I need the holy angels. I, I need your protection. I need your provision. And again, what he was showing me in this vision is people weren't asking for anything. He knew what they needed. He knew what they needed, and he was just supplying it because he loves to do that. I mean, he just, he wants to bless you exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond. And then you could ask, think, or imagine. That's his nature and his character. So, but what happened is, in this vision, he showed me again that as much as I was, you know, busy for him, in, in, in serving him and, and uh, you know he, that pleased him what he was really looking for is my yield yieldedness in in humility to spending more time with him and and having a heart that wanted to grow in the things of God and and it, it was there to a certain extent I'm in Bible school I'm, 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 I'm learning but there's a, a there's a fine line that we have to cross and into, into this place of humility. Now what's interesting is God showed me, actually it wasn't the time of the vision, it was some time later, he showed me that as I was looking at some things in the, uh, in, in the New Age movement and how, how that was working and how they were putting their demand as it would be you know, on the universe with the law of attraction, and, and there's a lot of reality to that. But what happens is when you get the positive, positive mindset of I am sufficient in myself and I can do all things, not through Christ, but I can do all things because of my meditation or because of my visualization and in you know, they're, what they're doing is they're putting self on the throne and self is the positive side now of the equation and I'm going to use the, uh, the power that God's given me for, for meditation and I'm going to use it in a vain way. In Psalm 1 it says to meditate on the word of God day and night and you're going to be like the tree planted by the river. Your leaves are going to go deep. Your, your, your roots are going to go deep. Your leaves won't wither. And whatever you do is going to prosper. Amen. Well, that word there for meditation, dagal, which means to meditate, 
it means to use your imagination. And so what happens is when my meditation is submitted to God and his word, and I recognize that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that's good imagination. That's good visualizing. That's good good use of things God's given to us. But what happens is in, in that same word, andago, which translated meditate in, in Psalm 1, verse 2, in Psalm 2, verse 1, in King James, it says, the heathen have vain imaginations. Now, that word imagination is the same word again, daga, for meditation. See, using your, your imagination is a godly thing. But when you're doing it because you're, you're, you're recognizing there's a power, there's an ability in using my imagination to see what I want, and I'm going to draw the universe, per se, the things of the universe to me because I can do this. Well, what happens, what God showed me, is that you are now becoming the positive side of the equation, and it sounds good. The only problem is there is an unseen force at work in magnetism. There's an unseen force at work in electricity, and there's an unseen force you can't see in the powers of the spiritual realm. And just as God supplies for us, because he is all-sufficient, and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, there is a God of this world. And the God of this world wants you to pull upon him, upon his power, and the way he's going to do that is through pride. And what happens is, when you begin to operate in this pride, I can do all things. I, you know, I have all this talent. I have all this ability. I have all this, you know, understanding of visualizing and, and meditation. And what's happening is you're doing it in self-sufficiency. What's happening is you're you're literally creating this um, positive side of the equation. And now what's going to happen is the devil who is the negative side, he's the dark side. What's going to happen is you're going to pull on his power and you're going to think you did something great, but in the, truth, the reality is you didn't do it in yourself. You did it in the powers of, of darkness. And, you know, I'm about out of time here, so I can't get too deep into this, but what God showed me again in this vision is the need... Uh, um, the, 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 the heart of God in, in that we recognize that we present ourselves a living sacrifice, holy, except to him as a living sacrifice. We, we, put, we put our confidence, our trust in him, knowing that, again, we can do all things through Christ, through the anointing, through the power of God that, that strengthens us. And we're going to do that as our spiritual service of worship. And what's going to happen is, as we do that, God's going to supernaturally, because he's all sufficient, he's going to supernaturally supply, oh my, he's going to supernaturally supply everything you need, whether it's finances, whether it's healing, health, wholeness, deliverance, marriage, whatever. He knows. And all we have to do is, is, is walk in this understanding he is he's everything we need amen we look to him the author and the finisher of our faith and then in verse 2 it says emphatically it says be not emphatic in greek, in greek it means an emphatic imperative be not conformed to this world i mean don't act like the world don't function like the world don't function in this new age mindset of of you can do all this stuff no, no, we don't want to do it according to the world, amen? No, I, I'm, I'm not going to be conformed to this world, but what's going to happen? I'm going to be transformed. And, and this is where we left off a couple of weeks ago. And that Greek word metamorpho is the same Greek word that happens with transfiguration. Same word for transfiguration. How does transfiguration happen? Well, Jesus said that in Matthew 17, it happened after six days. And six days prior is where he said, I'm going to lay my life down and I'm going to pick it up again. And then he goes on to say, if you're going to be my disciple, you need to do the same thing. Amen. You need to die to yourself, 
take up the cross, cross, Greek word staros, a place where one dies. You need to die to yourself and say, God, I'm yours, whatever you want. I, I know I need you. I'm, I'm going to be this living sacrifice. I'm going to present myself to you and I'm going to do whatever you say. Amen. And I'm going to have this hunger. I'm going to have this thirst. And I'm, I'm going to have this desire to grow and, 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 and to be the person you want me to be. Oh, glory to God. I'm, I'm out of time here. I, I, I'm trusting this is getting to you. Hope, I hope, you know, I know we did a little bit of review here from the last time, but this is so powerful. We, we just got to get it into our heart. The, the importance of, 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 of this um, death to self and walking in a place of humility. And as we do that, what's going to happen is there's going to be a supernatural, a supernatural supply to everything that you need. And then what's going to happen more and more, because we're being transformed by the renewing of our mind, we're going to see the, the, uh, the, the, the shell of self decrease and the light and the glory of God increase. And I'll tell you what, that's where we are right now. And we're coming into this most incredible move of God, the greatest awakening the world has ever seen. And you and I get to be on the front line. Woo! How exciting is that? Amen? Praise God. Well, I've gone over now a little bit. So, hey, let me just say again, thank you uh, to all of you that have been uh, helping. And uh, with uh, the, our schedule, you know, not being what it used to be, about half of our income literally came from traveling. And we're not doing that now, but you know what? So many of you have uh, risen up and said, let me be a part of what you're doing here. Let me help support the work of the ministry. So I want to say thank you to all of you. And uh, if you've yet, yet to, to subscribe, it would be to becoming a partner, whether you do it just here and there or become a monthly partner. We want to say thank you for whatever you can do to support the work of the ministry. We do have a vision and we've got a plan. We're working the plan and uh, to see over 100 million people, souls as it would be, saved, discipled, and serving God. And I'd love to be, be part of our team and uh, be part of that. And you can do that again by uh, mailing in an offering or you can do it online or, or you can call. All the information is on your screen. But again, I just want to say thank you because you're making it possible for us to do that, that what God's called us to do. And so have yourself a great, blessed, glorious week. We'll be back here next week, Tuesday again. And uh, we'll continue on with this walking and living in the glory. Amen. God bless. Thank you.